Welcome everyone. This buff has been scheduled um, very spontaneously because the talk that I gave yesterday, I'm the maintainer of Upstart and thought this might be a good idea to gather some ideas how we could improve our init system, how we could manage to, um, to, to transition to a new init system. I want to, I have some ideas in my mind. I want to hear a few if you think these ideas are crap or what. Um, and I just want to start with uh, some shortcomings I currently see in our current system. So, it's in space. Yeah, our current init system is just a bunch of shell scripts. Actually, if you look at one of the shell scripts, it's, uh, it starts stop daemon and, and you check the return code and based on that you do a lock um, message and so on. And if you have to re-implement this again and again and the policy changes over time, we have a very inconsistent uh, init system at the moment. So we don't really have specified what return codes we have to use. There is the LSB and I think we should uh, in the policy uh, refer to the LSB what return codes we expect to at least improve our current system. And there's also the problem with uh, our output. It's not very consistent at the moment. So it got a little bit better with the LSB uh, uh, logging um, mechanisms that are in place, but they're uh, by far not that sufficient. Okay, another plot problem I encountered when I started to help maintain co-maintain dbus was that whenever we had to restart dbus there was a problem that dependent services had to, re had to be restarted too so i think there are other cases where this is the same problem so what can we do about it the first thing about it is uh, reordering the boot sequence dependent on, on uh, the dependencies that's uh, the talk Petter, uh, that this Petter talked about it yesterday and i thought maybe it made sense to uh, implement the same kind of functionality in invoke RCD. I don't know, what do you think? Would it make sense that we have something like invoke RCD with depends, so we can restart that? I mean, I want this to be a boss, so everybody should join in. Uh, for some services, it makes sense, for others yeah. it doesn't, so yeah. mm -hmm. I don't know how to <coughs> determine which one. You need metadata for the let to let services, yeah. possibly declare whether or not that makes sense. Yeah, for example, restarting network might restart all the services using network or not in some sort of circumstances. Normally they just, loop, use, loop, they just listen to any interface and will keep running perfectly without network. Yeah, So which rate is the old NTP? The, it used to be that NTPD had that issue where you had to restart NTPD after you added new network interfaces or it wouldn't listen, yeah. which was actually eventually fixed in NTPD itself. but. Other things do have that problem. How does it do? It sleeps and retries again. Or it okay. apparently periodically monitors the list of available network interfaces from the okay. system call. But so this is one option to fix every daemon and make it pull and try again. If well, we the, 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 yeah, we, we fix a lot of different things that way and uh, already. I mean, like for example, the LDAP server was always an ordering problem because yeah. of all the different things they decided that they wanted to. If you're using uh, NS switch pointing to LDAP and the LDAP is your local LDAP, yeah. there's various different programs that have now been modified to be able to back off and retry. But mm. so there is, you, you can get somewhere by doing that, and it makes it more robust when you can. But there's some times when you can't. I think the problem here is that you, as I said, have, you have to fix every demo, and that you would have 20 processes sleeping doing essentially nothing. So there, there can be better ways than that. And what's the other problem with our current system? It's in our current init system, uh, we can't handle situations where you plug in USB stick where you probably have your home system mounted. Stuff like that, where you uh, have your network connected by a wireless uh, card that is after you boot it. And our current system can't deal with that really good. That's why I come to upstart later on. Another problem is service supervision. So we don't really have an, uh, a way to monitor services down. Yeah. Restart them when they are started, uh, when they are killed, when they die. So we'd have to refer to other tools like uh, run it, mon it, stuff like that. But it sits on top of that, and you have to use that. It's not really. Well, mon it dies. Nothing's watching mon it. Yeah. yeah. Screw it. But it was and, and the nice thing, if we can integrate this into init, mm -hmm. it's that init has special semantics. So if a if a child, if a fork, uh, 
process dies, you can monitor it easily. So this is usually the process you want to do there. One of the better units I saw allow you to have arbitrary numbers of servers which were monitored and restarted. Yeah. Because for a real server, that's really, really important. <coughs> the one thing you care about is the thing that died get brought back again. Yeah. Well, so there's, I mean, there's, there's a reason, though, why, why, we, why everybody invented, why starting with daemon tools, everybody's been reinventing this wheel uh, and without using a knit despite the fact that the NITS had its capability for forever, and that's the, the interface to uh, temporarily running a service down when you have a NIT monitoring it is hideous. Uh, you basically have to, I mean, for most of NITs, you basically have to comment out the init line and then tell a NIT to reread its configuration file, and that's, that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. um, the advantage of all these other utilities, like Monit and Runit and whatever else, is they have a control socket to the process that's monitoring that particular service, and you can run a command line and say, take the service down, bring the service yeah. up, issue an arbitrary signal to the service, a bunch of other things like that that are, that are actually extremely useful in practice for, mod for doing things to that daemon. Yeah. I mean, if, if somebody added that to an init, I'd be happy to use init, but it, it, init as it is doesn't have that capability. Yeah, yeah. it's too stupid, isn't it? So. And well, init is not uh, designed to, to have that capability. It was designed a very long time ago yeah. before the, the NITs uh, arrived, so I don't think it can be even engineers to, <laughs> to well, decently do it. And there's a strong argument to be made for making init as simple as possible. Yeah. I mean, it is process one, and if init dies, you're, yeah, it, it, it gets really annoying. Yeah. <laughs> So, with all this said, um, there were some attempts by Ubuntu, you probably know it, it's called Upstar. I'm currently the maintainer of it in, in Debian, and I'm very interested to, to make it possible to get uh, Upstar installed in Debian, so we can really use it as an alternative, maybe as the default in the future, who knows. And there are currently some issues that are blocking that, and I'll come to that later. So first, some, uh, some nice things about Upstart. So it's totally event-based. What you need are events, and events are generated whenever you plug in a hardware device. When a job is started, itself generates an event. So let's say dbus is started. The job itself uh, emits an event that it's called dbus started. And, and whenever such an uh, event is emitted, you can write another job that uh, listens on that event and is started on behalf of that. So. The only event that uh, Upstart itself uh, emits is startup, and from that on you start your, uh, your boot process. What, what it, that gives you is that uh, your boot process is completely race-free, so you mount uh, a device when the device is ready, and not uh, some arbitrary number in the boot process. And uh, the actual idea is to make uh, the boot process robust and not so much what, what some call Upstart is for making the boot, boot up faster. That's not the actual goal of, of Upstart, but it's a nice side effect. And uh, I had some nice pictures that shows that I could, yeah, by 50%, my boot time went down because it also paralyzes it. Uh, it just fires event, and many of them are started in uh, parallel. Are you involved in the development? Yeah, uh, my, let's say the, the upstream, the core developer is Scott James Randman. So I'm what I'm trying to do is not do, do the core development. Uh, I personally want to develop a, a Dbus proxy for, for you. That's, that's my personal goal to do that as a head project, which is a bit separate from it. But I'm, I'm listening on the mailing list. I give comments whenever it's got uh, once it's featured to have discussed. So this is my involvement, basically. But uh, the main author of Upstart is Scott James Randman. Are there any developers involved in the, the development of Upstart? Other than oh, I don't think so, but there are other distributions. One I know of already uses Upstart as main boot system to try. Which one? It's a bit developer. It's uh, it's if you know that. It's a smaller distribution. Which one? Frugalware, Frugalware. Don't, don't ask me how it's pronounced. And um, yeah, there are, there are some, I would say, 15 people who are around at. Uh, the IRC channel of Upstart, discussing things and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, I put the URL down there, so I don't know. It's upstartyubuntu.com. Exactly, and there's a wiki where you, leave com where you can leave comments. Every new feature that is discussed, uh, uh, Scott usually writes um, a spec where, where he wants, uh, where he writes. Okay. Well, it's written down what, what he wants to have implemented. Uh, 
Well, Andreas, um, Yeah. What I think is really nice about the concept of upstart is <coughs> that currently <coughs> the version that is experimental, so you can install it today, is um, what it basically does. There is one job called RCS that listens on, on the upstart event, and when that is started, it, it drives a complete system uh, five layer, compact layer. So at the moment, it, um, it uses your existing init scripts, so you won't notice a difference. This is the advantage that uh, upstart can be stress tested and, uh, and we can check if the code actually works and it does if, uh, as far as today, it does this very well. And we can tran uh, transmit, uh, transfer jobs bit by bit to, to real native upstart jobs. And if we want to have the full power of upstart, we have to do that somehow, somewhere to write native upstart jobs. Now the problem is um, how we are going to do that for Debian. If um, every package that ships an init script should do that uh, for system 5 in it and ship an upstart job, or should there be a separate package that ships all the, the, the upstart jobs that, that have been written so far, and uh, then when you install a package, it installs a corresponding upstart job. This is something I wanted to discuss with you mainly. That's my concern. So. Okay, there's, there's still some work to do before upstart can be a complete replacement. There's something called complex event config. It's something with, if when you want to combine several <coughs> events together. Say, if the network device has been plugged in and this condition or this condition, but not this condition, this is currently not yet working. What it currently does, it, it only listens for events and ors them. So if that happens or that happens or that happens, start it. That's that's basically it. But it's <coughs> it's basically enough to com try to complete the process with upside jobs alone. And I'm using it already on my laptop and it's working pretty well so far. Fortunately, I can't demo it because uh, my laptop, I couldn't get it to work really. So everyone who is interested in the format of these upside job files, I uh, can show it to you later. So. Isn't it just like an exit file and then even with command parameters? Yeah, um, that's a big difference between upstart and, and system 5 in its script, so it's declarative. You just say, okay, this is uh, the path to my to my demo, these, mm -hmm. are, these are the parameters, then you say, okay, do you want to have a respawn or not? And then you have uh, sections called pre-start, pre uh, post-stop, mm -hmm. where you can prepare the environment for the demo to be started. So for example, uh, a typical uh, use case for that would be to create a run directory or uh, initialize something, load a module. Um, yeah, and that's basically it. You write down and, and um, all the other stuff is automatically handled by upstart. So if you, if you type in start, that's a command by upstart, start uh, job name, it just brings it up. Uh, if the daemon is already started, it just does nothing. And if you type in in its CTL list, it shows you all running processes or all running jobs, and you can easily stop one job. And based on that, other jobs are either stopped if they have corresponding uh, um, um, stopped on, let's say, debug stopped uh, yeah. uh, commands in it, so they will be brought down automatically and brought up again when debug is started. So it's pretty easy to format. How does, it, how does it decide if a job is already running? Pardon? How does it decide if a job is already running? Uh, when, you go to, when, you, when you go to start a new one, for example. So as soon as the process is spawned, it says, okay, this job is started, an event uh, is fired, that this job is done. Okay. If you have so a it's kept track of by the running upstart daemon. Yeah. So the other thing is if you have a daemon that is, uh, after it started, it takes a while to initialize, spawn other daemons and stuff like that. You can, uh, you, there is a post start section where you can uh, monitor something like, okay, you have um, a Tomcat instance which connects to a MySQL server and only after that it's considered to be ready. You can ping your Tomcat server or your Apache server and only after that, that your server is considered to be up. So, yeah. What happens if you up for your upstart? Um, it just tells it to re-exit itself, and reloads it, and that's it. It, 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 it keeps, keeps all the state. It keeps all the state. Yeah, no problem. Where is it keeping the state? It's keeping 
keeping it. Uh, that new word. It's just reload itself, so it's keeping it in memory. Yeah. But, but you can <coughs> keep the state in memory if you re-exec yourself. Uh, what does it do? Now it just reloads it, sorry. It just, it just sends it a signal, so it reloads the configuration, that's all. Okay. So yeah, it's not really sorry, sorry. the old binary until the next time yeah. you reboot. Yeah, yeah, basically. Right. Yeah. Well, considering the fact that this uh, was it the meta info, uh, this uh, in the previous session, then yeah. somebody described something about this extra info and the LSB info. Yeah, it basically has the daemon name. If you can just add the parameters, it's pretty easy to generate the abstract scripts from there, unless something special has to happen. Well, yeah, well, I'll come to that later. So just just a moment. So one thing is that. Uh, I think that our current blocking to get upstart into uh, Debian is the following, that uh, our current system 5 init package is uh, required and essential. So if I want to replace a in init, I can't do that easily. Uh, if I'm not sure, uh, sort of workarounds or hacks like the, the wording in it, but I, actually I don't want to do that. I want to handle that in uh, a different way. Um, and there's also the problem that that our packages, our maintainer scripts, are expecting invoke RCD and update RCD. So this, they have to be around all the time. I think even during upgrades. So if you look at the, I think it's the sysvrc package, which does nice copy around magic when you upgrade it or when you remove it. So I thought that maybe this could be handled a bit easier to have always an invoke RCD and update RCD around. So my idea was to have a package called init base where you ship very basic implementations of these tools, which which only do nothing, um, which is uh, return zero. And then the actual implementation installs, uh, or the actual init script in installs the implementation of update RCD and invoke RCD. Does it sound like a plan? I mean... Mm, I don't think that would work. Uh, not quite sure why, but uh, well, yeah. it doesn't <laughs> sound like it's going to work for me, because... Uh, Installing a boot system do not really convert a machine to use that boot system. And uh, like if you install this uh, five RC, uh, you don't really have all the RC D directories with symlinks in them. And you really need to keep the old boot system until you actually reboot with new one before you can ditch it. So. Well, it's a complex problem to yeah, replace complex. the boot system. You have to be very careful when you do it after the machine is installed. Yeah. What happens if you install upstart at the at the current system is you you replace sbin in it, and um, when you sh shut down, it just basically calls the old uh, uh, system file layer. Yeah. So there shouldn't be that much of a problem. Yeah. Also and I don't think boot systems will have to keep the system file boot system around until they actually is able to shut down. Yeah. So which init program to run is a parameter somewhere in the boot process, isn't it? Which can you init? Yeah, well, you tell it's it's been init. You can I mean could you can tell Grub That's right. to run yeah, a different init. It. By yeah. default it's been init, but you can change it to something else. That I wonder if that's an easier switch, yeah. I wonder if that's an easier approach to switching. Yeah. But I don't know I just actually you should want to pass the parameter to the kernel at boot type. Right. So, so it's not so automatic. Right. So, right. Right. so you init energy. Pardon? To e when you switch to init energy, it just pro tell you to pass another parameter to the grab that is passed to the init yeah, and so on. But I don't think init in that init and G in that form is a complete replacement because it doesn't ship the usual tools like halt, reboot, shutdown. That's already been taken care of. The all the, those tools were moved into a different package already. Yeah, I did that. Yeah, yeah, I know that. But what I wanted to say is, uh, Sorry. if you install init and G as it is currently, uh, it's not a complete replacement because right. you have to manually configure stuff. So to say, okay, use that tools and not the old ones. So, oh, okay. so if you want to replace it, it has to replace as been in it. So no, the boot option can be handled by update grub automatically. There could be. A like if there's a setting somewhere what to use, then update crop, crop could insert the right parameter automatically. So we don't have one, don't have the users editing it if they don't want it. But yeah. I think so it's that, pointed. That's solvable. 
I think his and point is that some of the other system administration tools are yeah. expecting to run SPIN and NIT in order to do their, their action. Um, my plan is to replace SPIN in it and that's not work around somehow to rename it and uh, I think that's the only work, uh, way it will, will work properly. Um, well, I, I believe your assumption is flawed because you have to keep the old one around until you boot. Yeah. And when yeah. you have to keep it around when, until you boot, it's going to be SPIN in it and SPIN hold and a few other ones. Well, I could show you. I can replace a running system with upstart and you can shut down. Well, well yes, but uh, yeah, you're, you're replacing it with an uh, upstart that runs compatibility mode. Yeah, I mean, if it didn't what, what you have to do, it would work. Yeah, what, what you have I mean, to do right now is to. That, that's correct, that's correct. I can, I can replace a running as been in it uh, process with, with upstart in the combat mode. Mm -hmm. So, well, if we ever. Uh, the idea of having a GUP parameter is that it could be that, like, on the first boot, you, you install together with stuff, you have, like, an update script that is executed on first boot and then removes the. Again. Yeah, but if you have removed the, the system file in a package and it's gone, then it's been in this away. And I don't want to install yeah. it in parallel, so because then the, the, in yeah, the, package, the, the package can't keep track of it. I did notice one thing. Uh, PDOF is missing from Upstart. I had a system that didn't boot because of that. Yeah. Not completely anymore. Pardon? PDOF is missing from Upstart. At least the Debian is this binary or what? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it was quite funny because the device I was using it on relied on PDOF to find certain things to get part in its boot. Executable even shiftings is fine. That's, that's one of the ones yes. that says 5 init utils at yeah. this point. PID of along with last and a few other things. Okay, and, it, and it's intended that way that these utils are shipped in the, in the Syswire utils package and you can install them along uh, upstart. So it's actually intended okay. to work that way. Okay, I thought upstart actually removed them. I guess it should depend on it then. Yeah, it, if you install the upside combat sys5 package, it will install uh, sys5 utils. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, basically this was my... If we don't go this this way, how could we make the sys5 init package not uh, essential, not required to have the chance to install upstart? If you think this idea is not going to work. Don't you think it is a actually suitable that you t uh, to just keep the system and install the package and via the crop parameter on the next boot just completely switch over to your system and whatever it is, I mean, there's not But you have many clashing binaries. It's Aspen init that clashes with upstart. But Aspen init does not clash because you have the boot parameter. And any other binaries that are clashing? How? Reboot. Tell Shut it. down. Could stuff they like could that. be... Uh, they could be wrapper scripts. They check what's, current, what's the current email script and um, run through. Just, um, the problem is, as far as I see, you could mostly the upgrade until the first reboot. But that's no problem if you just replace the boot parameter because that's not active until the next reboot. And then all the binaries that are called while the system is running, and these could just check well, what's the current process one? Yeah. Is it what's the executable name? Is it <coughs> SBIN init? Is it SBIN upstart? And depending on that, um, call the do the right thing. So I think that would work, and they have the good, the nice advantage that you always have the system in it installed. And in case something goes wrong, you have the choice to just boot grab with another init parameter, and you have another init system. Uh, the problem is that it requires manual editing, I think. So no, oh, not exactly. You could query the uh, quick, uh, or, or or check in some way, for example. Even even with the process name, you could query which uh, init system is currently running. And uh, I mean the, the wrappers sh uh, would have to be a bit more intelligent and then and therefore a bit more uh, complex. But still, uh, well, uh, they they can query what is running and just uh, run whatever is needed based on. Mm. And uh, there's no manual interaction with the grub because you can have grub update yeah. have this functionality, so you can just. Can you pass a parameter to update grub so it no, so update if, you, if you have to manually uh, manually edit uh, uh, boot grub manually, that's not. No, no. Update 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 grub. Grub. The kernel install does it, for example. You just call update yeah. grub in your post instance, and of course, update grub has to know about the <coughs> fact that it has to decide what in system to install, mm -hmm. and it could either have a priority thing or there could be um, an alternative. Uh, well, any way for the um, for you to decide what in system to run. It does not involve editing boot grub, but maybe ETC 
this is the image system I want, or just debug tree configure um, upstart makes it itself insert to the grub. So the question is actually how can we modify the grub system to be more adaptable to changing in it system? Yeah, it's, moment, it's not easy to do without manual editing, but it's yeah. perfectly possible to talk to a problem and get it fixed. Yeah. 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 No, that script will be like single user mm -hmm. And if you don't use that? Well, so. <laughs> you know, there, then you then you, then you file, yeah, then you know the file you just type in in it equals less than upsize. Wouldn't it be easier to make it two stage install? Okay. Like just, you want to install the package. I just want to go on with some okay. slides more it's, it's, it's really short actually. Yeah. Okay. So basically, it's two stage install. You install the package. The first thing it does puts the binaries in a place where it knows they are. Uh, that's the grub. Goes into sim sim uh, in a single user mode, actually, kind of thing, without run levels, where it knows that it's it goes to that script, installs all the stuff, removes the old stuff, and then reboots again. Then you start from a clean system. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, what 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 about the old package? If we just remove it, it's still recorded. In you only database. remove it afterwards. You only remove it when you're in a kind of single user mode, where the updates, where the install script runs it. Mm -hmm. So you don't have a run level because you're in single user mode. So you just want to RM a uh, binary without having it removed from the you can do database? Yeah, D package runs. Yeah. Okay. I think we can conclude that switching the boot system during it while it's running it's a complex problem. That's why I As I said, do it from single user. If I go the root um sysfar in it, upstart plus compact layer, it's not a problem. It actually works today. You just install it. It shuts down, and, and if we really want to uh, to move to the system, we could could make it um, uh, upstart plus compact system for one release. And for the next, we could uh, go to the new uh, in its uh, upstart jobs. So this would be a possible upper part. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I don't know. It's almost thousand packages using init scripts. Uh, well, the the nice the nice thing about that would be we could replace the system in a package with upstart. It has basically this exactly the same uh, functionality as it has today, uh, because it uses the system five in its scripts, and so we don't lose anything, and we don't gain anything much. And what uh, what we get this this uh, compatibility mode you you say that Obstart has can be even I guess used in syst in different systems, because it's just uh, a, a binary that calls all the RC file, uh, RC file in, in order, right? So exactly. It just it just calls the old so system file so in its scripts. So this script could it could be even split it from upstart, put into the, the base in it, the whatever uh, indispensable in it uh, that we will have. Well, it that doesn't really the, the drugs, sense. Yeah, that doesn't help us really. I think it's not possible either because it's in the binaries. We had a few more slides. Yeah, it's like in the meetings. Okay. The compatibility. Okay, this, this was my basically my idea to, to have that uh, to make really uh, possible to to have this five in it not being uh, required and, and uh, essential to introduce this new package, make this one required and essential, and let this one depend on the actual implementation default. So so any init system that com. Uh, can provide a complete implementation that means a working invoke RCD and in working uh, update RCD plus uh, driving all init scripts that are currently available either to uh, either through a, a compact layer or through native jobs could could have this provides uh, init system so you could really replace it. Do we have a documentation describing what that boot system is supposed to contain like update RC and hold and it all and yeah. I mean, update RCD and invoke RCD are the current uh, APIs. I would call it in Debian for for managing uh, init scripts. So I think this is the starting point too. Yeah, but that's not complete. There is well, the there is packet is all this shut down. Out. Yeah, I could I could write down this list. What what is expected? Yeah, it's probably useful because then you can compare the available yeah. in systems and see if they actually fill the list or not. Or not. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if we can define a, a subset which is interchangeable, yeah. you know, a scheme like this can Yeah, work. We, for if example, GDM calling uh, this binary for shutdown and stuff like that, that yeah. would be, yeah. But if they're all too different, then it all gets a bit hairy, yeah. so. Yeah. Okay.
Well, even if you can't get between different systems, still going with this gives you the option when you're writing custom installers and things that you could have one install process that gives you SysV in it and another install process that gives you upstart. Yeah, yeah. this was another idea. So if you install it from the... And that might be easier to just decide when you create the installer what you're going for and make it possible to keep upgrading the old system if they don't have a new feature. What happens with Rubble Lilo? It's a similar kind of tricky to change thing. The old systems with Lilo are still running Lilo. Mm. Unless the manual process to change was done. I mean, you can't just have to get installed drill and it changes over. It no, it doesn't. No, okay. so. You can try. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> what I was wondering. Yeah, maybe we just okay. say. But in five to ten years, all the old systems you could, are gone. Right, you could just say it's an install time only thing, and then okay. it's a much simpler problem. Obviously, it is nice to be able to change. Okay, yeah. okay there's, there's another problem I'm currently dealing with, and that is. Um, I want to get uh, native upstart jobs or native NVNG jobs or whatever um, having installed on your system. Currently, as I said, it tries to complete the uh, system file So how, how should we do that? There's this approach called meta in it. We describe it for, uh, in, a, in a common uh, description language and you generate uh, the, the start file or the start job file for, for your system in use. Um, but I think there's one, there are two, a few problems. Let me skip to the slide. And this is, yeah, that if you, that we have problems testing it if different uh, uh, developers use different systems, um, we will have possibly problems to verify that the boot sequence is correct. Someone using upstart might not test the scripts or the, the, the mechanic scripts for, uh, um, for, uh, for the current system, system 5, for example. And we also discussed that MetaInit only targets the, the simpler scripts, so we still have the more complex uh, initialization scripts, be it UDEV, HALDIVAS, and stuff like that, Apache. I don't, wa I don't think, I'm not sure if we can uh, manage to, to handle that with MetaInit. And uh, so there's still a way that we need to have uh, this native uh, start shops for a different init system, uh, to have to replace the, uh, the, the corresponding system 5 in a job. So it's clear somehow uh, what I wanted to say. Since the meta idea is only a few days old, maybe we shouldn't start with those slight possible problems, but maybe first describe it. Yeah, yeah. Unless anyone <coughs> here has already... The, it was meta I, I thought the there was already a buff, so you discussed... Oh, sorry. Well, even end of this meta idea can solve one problem. It's actually the quality of the of the startup scripts. Yeah, that's right. Because there are like startup scripts that like grab PS, this, out and like spawning seven shells and doing lots of things while one command could do it, which actually slows down your boot. I, I, I don't want to bury this idea, not, 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 uh, it's not my intention. But what I want to uh, have in mind when, when doing this meta oh. idea is to, to actually get an, an, an idea how many scripts can actually be handled with, meta, with this meta init idea, so we have hard numbers. So I think we have around 1,000 init scripts at the moment in the archive. And when we, we could say, okay, we have 900 that we can handle with meta init, this would be, a, would be an achievement. So only two out of four of mine. <coughs> Take a random figure. Yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a, it, there, I think there's a lot of init scripts that do strange things. I mean, I, I have one that has a check for the kernel module being loaded and another one that checks a bunch of stuff around whether or not you already have an LDAP database. So. Yeah. No, but as, as uh, we already discussed this, of course, discussion uh, changes when, uh, when implementing. But as we originally discussed this, uh, okay, not every uh, pack, uh, package can use meta -init, but most things can, can be specified. I mean, not, not only the most basic uh, uh, installations, uh, uh, startup scenarios, mm -hmm. uh, but also some of the, uh, the ones that have a, a bit of complexity. I, I do think that. Uh, I don't know, throwing just a number, but uh, over 90% of the packages we currently ship, having a, a shipping a, a init scripts will be available with, uh, with meta init. Okay, so, the, so my question is how do we deal with the uh, remaining 100 init scripts? Yes, so. Right. And no, and, and, no, and even with those, even with those, the thing is, uh, they, no, they it's a hard question how to how to uh, replace them in the running system. Well, sure, but if you see the scope of meta in it as a way to make most of the scripts consistent 
and behave well, properly yeah, and efficiently that. for system five. Then no. it's perfectly possible to generate a lot of these scripts automatically with a template. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if you then reduce the number of problematic scripts from 1,000 to 100, the problem is suddenly possible to grasp in an evening. Yeah. Is that the evening. Well, we still, still have right to now is, is that uh, even if it's uh, very easy to migrate, well, we have to get 1,000 people to migrate their, their scripts. And uh, even if it's only uh, a good thing, well, uh, it's not by default. So, yeah. so it's not that easy. It's uh, also what you propose with Upstart. Well, sound, sounds great, but yeah. you have to get people to migrate. Yeah, yeah sure. This. So I'm I'm looking for ideas. This this meta edit could deal with the 90 percent, I think, and the remaining hundred. I, I don't know how to tackle this. If if I as Upstart maintainer should ship uh, these hundred in scripts for the more complex ones in, in, in my own package. And on install time, instead of installing the sysvar init counterpart, I take it from my package and test it from there. Would that be an idea? Yeah. Would other should, should, other should, 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 should the package itself ship system five init uh, start scripts and upstart uh, start scripts? I suspect that the okay. most complex boot scripts in Debian boot systems are the ones in the init scripts package. Sure, I and mean, the, the network early initialization. Boot, yeah, yeah, the early boot system is very complex and yeah. it gets a lot easier when you have a file system that actually is writable and yeah. available. So but on the other hand, if you look, for example, at, at the Bluetooth uh, start script, it's pretty complex and long and uh, stuff like that. So this would be broken up in smaller chops, usually within Upstart, where you actually start uh, very little pieces only and React on, uh, for example, when and Bluetooth devices added stuff like that. Yeah. Um, you file a bug and you keep the patch to maintain. Yeah, I mean, it's easy for each, it's it's each application to supply upstart scripts. That seems to me to be the right answer. The moment they supply any scripts, they should supply upstart scripts. Yeah. The problem is that that it maybe takes much longer to yeah. get to get started. If I want to say, okay, people, you can up, uh, install upstart mm -hmm. and you can run it now. If I have to wait until all the people get there. But well, it's it's to, to get to the point where I can actually recommend people start using dependency-based system five scripts. So yeah. <coughs> it takes a while in Debian. Okay. Yeah, well. and and then if you can reduce it to 100 instead of 1,000, it's going to take less yeah. time. Yeah. Of course, you have to. And it might even be that some of the problematic are actually not problematic. Yeah. 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 Might be that a number of those problematic ones in system five might be really easy in upstart or who knows what. But other system we use. But I mean, I think meta init is a great idea regardless of whether or not we switch to any other different init system just because the majority of init scripts in Debian are badly written. And yeah. if the more people we can get to stop writing init scripts and instead describe what they want to do and let something and write an init script for them, exactly. yeah. the this better off we are. Yeah. So this was something uh, we need better understanding of what our current init scripts are actually doing if they're... Yes. Because Another problem I see is that the, the event-based paradigm and the dependency-based paradigm are different. So I'm not sure if, if we can handle many jobs that with both. So that could be tricky. Yeah. yeah. I have a feeling this meta init already even contains like dependency information. Well, the idea currently for meta init is, um, but that's of course very alpha and meta, 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 meta is B header, so meta yeah. init yeah. stuff. So where I myself see uh, meta init where it can really help is that we get more consistent with consistency with our current system mm -hmm. five init. So as I said before, most of the init scripts are just such stop deeming. Uh, it's shell scripts that are duplicated a lot, just copy and paste mostly from existing ones. Well, then from skeleton actually. Or of course from skeleton. Yeah. 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 Skeleton gets yes. updated and, and the return codes and yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah. a bit messy. And maybe it's it's getting better or more consistent this way. Even so. sorry, to, uh, sorry to interrupt, but even a bit more than uh, being consistent. For example, when we, we implemented, we adopted the the uh, having the LSB headers. Well, it took a while. And I'm I'm sure there are many scripts who, who, who which still don't uh, ship that information. Mm -hmm. uh, the main the main help will be uh, when going forward. Yes, whenever we start requiring some changes in, in the way our scripts are made. Because, uh, well, the thing is we want to uh, trigger the, uh, the, well, the original idea we, we had is uh, via DPKG triggers, which are not uh, even yet accepted, uh, no. but whatever. The thing is uh, the init scripts can be kept up to date, and right now they depend on the update of the package. No. 
The, the, one of the advantages of the LSP stuff, though, was is that we were able to write a Lintian uh, check rule mm -hmm. for it. And some of the things that we've discussed here are complicated enough that it's hard to do that. For example, uh, I have no idea how I'd even start writing a Lintian check for your init script is simple enough, you should be using that in it. <laughs> it's very close to the skeleton, it's probably. Yeah, but I mean, you know, Lintian, it's hard to do that kind of sort of fuzzy matching in yeah. Perl. Actually, um, I think Enrico could do that. <laughs> <laughs> what, by magic or? No, using Zapian. Okay. Which is magic text search technology, which is what DevTags is based on, but it just, you know, it can do, looks a bit like. Um, this mm. is what we want. Okay, so. I must admit that Debian is our as far as I can see, a slow organization to turn. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the reason why I didn't jump to the upstart wagon when Scott uh, asked me about it and if I was interested in yeah. working on the development. Because I don't think it's possible to uh, switch Debian to a new boot system in a short time frame. Ah, and I that's why I was focused on the be hard headers. I think it will be hard, but I think uh, upstart has great potential. Mm -hmm. And uh, because mm -hmm. it really uh, provides a sound percent compatibility, I actually don't see why it couldn't replace it, and then step by step we move uh, to this new system. Sure, and my effort to actually to make the System 5 boot system correct doesn't really conflict with that. No, it doesn't. And so I'm well aware that, that the kernel's uh, event-based uh, boot uh, features is unsolvable with the System 5 boot system. I mean, there, there are many problems I couldn't uh, speak in detail is with when you uh, initialize LVM on RAID and stuff like that, where you have a lot of race conditions. It's our current system can't really deal with that correctly, I think, and it won't in the future. And then there is where Upstart really can help to improve the situation. And I don't think we can handle that with system. But that part. is a very few packages involved in that part of the system. It's probably but, but, 10, 10 but, packages in the <laughs> system that's handled hardware loading, file system... But do you need a new init for that, in my opinion? How would you handle that with System 5 to make that possible? I don't know. Possible? But my focus at the moment is to improve the current system to a point where we know that there's no need to optimize anymore. It's correct and fairly stable. And when we got that to that point, I think the rest of the Debian community will be well aware of the bugs of the early system and ready to switch to something better. Maybe it's upstart, maybe it's something else, I don't know. I think that the Debian way of introducing a new um, init system would be compared to introducing a new architecture. Some team of very talented people start working for seemingly nothing, converting package by package, converting package by package to additionally include their init script and using some kind of internet hack to, hacks to make the init system run without changing what everyone else uses yeah. and after a while the system suddenly supports 80% of init scripts and people say okay it's almost there let's make it um, more official supported and push the rest together so they support it and in the end well, actually I'm hoping that Debian can be as flexible enough to give the user the choice of init system and the um, yeah. problem I see with that is that if you have um, half a dozen of init systems and every init uh, system maintainer bugs the maintainer uh, come on ship my init script too. So it will a bit get a bit messy. So and then because you'd have to update it and the maintainer of the package probably doesn't run every init system available. That's so then you publish this bugs like yeah, but, it, but it's still it's still a problem for the hundred complex init scripts. Well you also have to see how many of those people are going to install actually those hundred complex scripts. Because like I said, most of them are like in the beginning. And then some of the complex stuff are like maybe servers or weird demons that maybe uh, minority runs. But then again, you, you have some very uh, unpopular packages such as Apache, such as Samba. I mean, so the good thing is to be able to pinpoint one of them is that it's easier to get the, the maintainer or the team to make some changes. Yeah. But they're not minority packages. They're they very don't have to Apache be is not really complex. Mm -hmm. you have a but but like some of these very popular uh, packages have re relatively complex. Well, I don't think it's a um, uh, property of the system that it has to have a complex use script. I think it's more like how they structure it. They can have like a script to do magic and run the program. And then the Inescape is like two lines, run the magic and run the program. 
Uh, well, people, I have to cut you now. I, yeah. I see we're in a good discussion, but uh, we have.